Hey guys, in this video, I wanna share with you some of the research behind cannabis or marijuana's effect on your hormones. Cannabis or marijuana is one of the most widely used illicit substances there is. And with a growing or an increased popularity of cannabinoid rich products, so things like CBD oil, the interest and use of marijuana seems to only be increasing. And although there is some established data around the neuroendocrine effects of marijuana use in general, the acute and chronic dose related effects of marijuana use on your hormones is less established. As an example, it is generally known that the use of marijuana can have a dopaminogenic effect and affect the dopamine system. However, the results are often mixed, showing increases of dopamine and decreases of dopamine. But looking beyond just the dopaminogenic effects of dope or marijuana, there is emerging research that shows that the psychoactive chemical in marijuana, THC, can affect a variety of different hormones in the body. For example, if we take a look at this study here that talks about the effects of cannabinoids on serum cortisol and prolactin levels in humans, at a socially relevant dose, THC was found to raise plasma cortisol levels in a dose-dependent manner, but the frequent users of marijuana showed blunted increases relative to healthy controls. However, the frequent users had lower baseline plasma prolactin levels relative to healthy controls. Now, according to preclinical studies, the acute use of cannabis and the exposure to THC and cannabinoids was found to increase cortisol levels. Whereas in human and preclinical literature, there's actually mixed reports on prolactin levels. Some show a decrease, some show an increase, and others show no change in prolactin levels upon the use of cannabis or the administration of cannabinoids and THC. So in summary, that study found that cannabis use and the administration of THC or cannabinoids does indeed increase cortisol levels, but it invariably affects your prolactin levels. And if you're familiar with our YouTube channel, then you're aware that prolactin is a pituitary stress hormone and one of the hormones that tends to rise under stress. However, as this study is pointing out, everybody has a different adaptation to stress or a different stress tolerance. So two people exposed to the same stressor might have different reactions, at least hormonally speaking. However, this study is confirming though that generally speaking, the use of marijuana, at least smoking marijuana or administrating THC can induce a secretion or a rise of cortisol, the classic stress hormone. So piecing together a little bit more of information, let's take a look at this study that talks about the endocrine effects of marijuana use in males. Now this study finds that THC depresses prolactin but also depresses thyroid gland function, growth hormone, while elevating the adrenal cortical steroid, so hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. So one of the things that this study found was that THC actually blocked the release of gonadotropin release hormone, which results in lowered luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone production, which ultimately leads to a reduction in testosterone levels. So considering the fact that all of the hormones are interrelated and affect one another, this study is further confirming the fact that THC and cannabis can cause a rise in cortisol. And generally speaking, cortisol can oppose thyroid function. And this is something that this study at least confirmed, that is depressing or decreasing thyroid hormone secretion and the functioning of the thyroid gland in general while causing an elevation of cortisol. Now this study also found out that the use of cannabis generally interfered with the production of testosterone. However, it's saying that it depressed prolactin levels. And generally speaking, one of the hormones that opposes the release of the gonadotropin release hormone and impairs the testicles ability to make testosterone is prolactin. So this is a little bit contradictory, at least in terms of endocrinology and the effects that hormones like thyroid and prolactin play in the body. Something else is that thyroid hormone tends to regulate prolactin. So it's interesting and contradictory to think that marijuana use decreases the production of thyroid hormone, but also decreases prolactin when one of the primary regulatory hormones of prolactin is thyroid hormone. But my guess is that in certain people, marijuana is having a dopaminogenic effect and the increased rise of dopamine would cause a decrease in prolactin. But what I'm seeing here, at least piecing together some of the picture, is that generally speaking, the use of marijuana and specifically THC and other cannabinoids is exerting a stressful effect that is increasing the adrenal cortical stress hormones, decreasing thyroid function, and impairing the production of testosterone. These are all anti-metabolic and stressful effects. 
So although it might have a subtle dopaminergic effect that is lowering prolactin on the short term, it's likely to induce a rebound effect because over time studies have found that chronic use of marijuana can actually interfere with the dopaminergic system, ultimately decreasing dopamine levels, which might cause a rise in prolactin levels after chronic use or many years of cannabis use. Not to mention that overall the cannabis plant is an estrogenic substance. The cannabis plant is derived of the same family of the hops plant, some of the most estrogenic plants on the planet, and it's well established that cannabis and the marijuana leaf in of itself is estrogenic and regular use of it can cause an elevation in your estrogen levels. And estrogen not only impairs thyroid function, but estrogen also stimulates the production of prolactin and actually stimulates the production of cortisol by way of the pituitary gland. So overall, looking at some of the neuroendocrine effects and hormonal effects of marijuana or cannabis use, it appears that it exerts more of a stressful effect than anything else. Quickly reviewing some of the effects that marijuana use has on the hormones in the body, we know that the use of marijuana and administration of THC and cannabinoids is going to decrease thyroid hormone production, decrease the production of testosterone, while increasing the production of other stress hormones like cortisol, increasing estrogen, and it has invariable effects on prolactin. But generally speaking, I would imagine that for most people, because of its estrogenic effects, because of its antithyroid effects, ultimately I would think that regular cannabis use would lead to elevations of prolactin at least somewhere along the lines. Now before we end this video, I do just want to close by saying that of course there are beneficial effects of marijuana or the cannabis plant. Everything can be beneficial in the right dose. And that appears to be the case with marijuana use. And probably why there are so many mixed and varying results in the effects of long-term or even acute use of marijuana. So I think in the right dose, the cannabis plant can be medicinal and exert beneficial effects. But generally speaking, I think you're going to want to stick to oral consumption of it and also not smoking it. Probably the least stressful way to use the medicinal properties of the marijuana plant is to take some sort of CBD product internally. Now keep in mind that the oil in the marijuana plant, the CBD, is a polyunsaturated fat and there's negative effects or downsides that can come with that. However, if you'd like to learn more about some of the more safe and effective ways to reap the benefits of cannabis or marijuana, definitely be sure to watch this video. Otherwise, that brings today's video to a close. So if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. If you're interested in referencing the studies I was mentioning in this video, you can find those along with our blog, our online tonic herb shop, and our online wellness academy, all in the description box below.